monitor. This is Dr. Padma, Assistant Professor, Department of Physics, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Hyderabad. Today, I am going to discuss about drift current, diffusion current, carrier generation and recombination. So, topics to be covered in this session are what is drift current, what is diffusion current, then what is total current and then we will discuss about the carrier generation and recombination process and carrier lifetimes. These are the topics to be covered in this session. Drift current. So, electric current arises due to the movement of charge carriers. So, basically, electrical current arises due to the movement of charge carriers. Charge carriers means here electrons or poles. Electrons or poles. So, the electric current basically arises due to the movement of charge carriers. In a semiconductor, charge carriers are electrons in the conduction band. So, if you take any semiconductors, charge carriers are electrons in the conduction band and holes in the valence band. So, in the case of semiconductor, charge carriers are electrons in the conduction band and holes in the valence band. So, basically the electric current arises due to the movement of charge carriers. <coughs> but in semiconductor, charge carriers are electrons in the conduction band and holes in the valence band. Charge carriers means either electrons or holes. But in the case of semiconductor, Electrons uh, are the charge carriers in the conduction band and the holes are the charge carriers in the valence band. So, due to the thermal agitation, they move randomly in all directions and hence the net current in any direction is zero. That means, due to thermal agitation means, if you provide any temperature or if you increase any temperature to a semiconductor, then the charge carriers are moves randomly in all directions. So, the charge carriers are moves randomly in all direction and hence the net current in any direction is zero. So, due to the thermal agitation means if you increase the temperature, then the charge carriers are moved in random direction. So, if you take the net current in any direction is zero. When an electric field E is applied, for example, E is the electric field. So, the electric field E is applied to across a semiconductor, every charge carrier experiences a force. So, due to the electric field, if you apply the electric field to a semiconductor, due to the electric field, every charge carrier experiences some force due to the electric field. Due to the applied electric field, every charge carrier experiences some force and it drifts in the direction of the force. So, the drift is in the direction of force. So, when an electric field is applied to a semiconductor, every charge carrier experiences some force due to the electric field and it drifts in the direction of the force. So, the drift is in the direction of the force. Thus, a charge carrier acquires an average velocity. So, due to the drift, the charge carriers acquire some velocity which is called as the drift velocity. So, if you apply any electric field, then the charge every charge carrier experiences some force due to the electric field, due to the applied electric field and it drifts in the direction of the force. Then the charge carriers acquire an average velocity which is called the drift velocity. So, the drift velocity gives rise to the drift current. So, charge carriers acquires an average velocity due to the drift which is called as the drift velocity. So, it gives rise to the drift current. Then expression for the drift current density. So, current density means cur current per unit area is known as the current density. So, current density J equal to current per unit area. J equal to I by A where I is the current and A is the area. So, current density means current per unit area is known as the current density which is denoted as J, J equal to I by A where I is the current and A is the area. So, for the expression for drift current density, let us consider a cylindrical semiconductor. So, if you take any cylindrical semiconductor that has the length L and the area of cross section is A. So, to, provide, to derive the expression for drift current density, let us consider a one cylindrical shape semiconductor with a length L and area of cross section is A. 
So let an electric field E by uh, let an electric field E is applied along the length of the semiconductor. So E is the electric field. So we are applying electric field E along the length of the cylinder due to which carriers acquires a drift velocity V. So due to the electric field, charge, car charge carriers experiences some force. Due, uh, they drift in the direction of the force and those charge carriers gain the velocity. That velocity is known as the drift velocity. So for drift current density, we are considering a cylindrical shape semiconductor with length L and area of cross section is A. Now we are applying an electric field E by the length along the length of the cylinder due to which carriers acquires the drift velocity V. Then this is the cylindrical shape semiconductor. So this is the cylindrical shape semiconductor. Here L is the length of the semiconductor A is the cross section area. So area of cross section. Now we are applying the electric field. Electric field E is applied along the length of the uh, semiconductor. Now the time taken by a carrier, if you take any charge carrier either electron or pole, the time taken by a carrier to travel the length L of a cylinder is time t equal to length by velocity. So, length L and V is the velocity. So, if you take a cylindrical shape of a semiconductor with length L and area of cross section is A. Now, we are applying the electric field along the direction of the length L. Now, if you take any charge carrier, the time taken by the charge carrier to travel this length of L of the cylinder is the time t equal to L by V, where L is the length of the semiconductor, V is the velocity. If NC is the carrier concentration, so here NC is the carrier concentration, then total number of carriers inside volume air. Generally, carrier concentration or carrier density. So, uh, that is known as the uh, carrier concentration or carrier density means the number of charge carriers present per unit volume is known as the carrier concentration or charge carrier density. So, it can be represented at NC. So, the number of charge carriers present per unit volume is known as the uh, carrier concentration or charge carrier density. So, if NC is the carrier concentration, then the total number of carriers inside the volume or the total number of carriers present per volume, volume means here area into length, that is the volume of the cylinder. So, area is A, length is L. So, L is the uh, volume of the cylindrical semiconductor. So, here the total number of carriers present in the volume, here volume is area into length of the cylinder, then the total carrier concentration is NC into uh, NC into A into L. Here NC is the carrier concentration, A is the area of cross section, L is the length. Hence, the total charge inside the cylinder is NC into AL into E. <coughs> So, the total charge inside the cylinder can be represented as NC into AL into E. Here E is the charge of electron. Here E is the charge of electron. So, E is the charge of electrons. So, the rate of flow of charge, that means the current flowing through the semiconductor. So, the current flowing through the semiconductor, generally current can be represented as charge per time charge per time is known as current. So, here the total number of charge carriers present inside the semiconductor is NC into AL into E. That is the total charge inside the cylinder. Now, the current can be written as I equal to I equal to NC I equal to NC into AL into E divided by T. So, charge per time is known as current. Already we know that time is L by V. So, I equal to NC into AL into E by L by V. So, here L, L cancel. Then I equal to NC into A into E into V.
so that is the current so if nc is the carrier concentration then the total number of carriers inside the volume here volume is al of the cylinder now the to, the number of carriers inside the volume is nc into al so then the total charge inside the cylinder can be represented as nc into al into e where e is the charge of electron now therefore the rate of flow of charge that is current the current flowing through the semiconductor is i equal to charge by time here the charge inside the cylinder is nc into al into e by t already we know that the time taken by the charge carrier to travel along the length is t equal to l by v so nc into al into e by l by v here l l l, l cancel then i equal to nc into a v a v into e this is the current i equal to i equal to n c into a into v into e so so therefore the current density that is current per unit area of cross section so the current density means the current per unit area of cross section so the current density means j j equal to current per u per u area so current per area uh, current per unit area means current is i area is a already we know that i value is nc into e into v nc into nc into e into v divided by so the current density is j equal to i i value is nc into av into a divided by a a a cancel now the current density is j equal to nc into e into v this is the expression for the drift current density so therefore the current density current density means current per unit area of cross section so j equal to i by a already we know that i value is nc into a into ev divided by a a and a are cancel then j equal to nc into ev this is the expression for the drift current density now if mu is the mobility of the carrier so mobility means average drift velocity per unit electric field so mu equal to v by e so here v is the drift velocity v is the drift velocity and e is the electric field so if mu is the mobility of the charge carrier mobility means average drift velocity per unit electric field is known as the mobility mobility is denoted as mu so if mu is the mobility of charge carrier mobility means average drift velocity per unit electric field then mu equal to v by e where v is the v v is the drift velocity e is the electric field now therefore equation 2 for current density becomes j equal to in the place of v so mu equal to v by e average drift velocity per unit electric field mobility mu equal to v by e from this v equal to mu into e so in the place of v we can replace mu into e so the uh, average the current density becomes j equal to nc into u into mu into e this is the current density j equal to nc e mu e that is equation 3 now diffusion current it is possible to have a non uniform concentration of particles so here non uniform concentration of particles means either the concentration of electrons or holes so it is possible to have a non uniform concentration of electron and the holes are present inside the semiconductor so there is a possibility to have a non uniform concentration of electrons and holes present inside the semiconductor in a such case particles tends to move from the region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration so if the non uniform concentration of electrons and holes are present inside the semiconductor in such cases the electrons or holes are move from high concentration region to low concentration region so this movement of particles due to the concentration gradient is known as the diffusion so the movement of particles that means the movement of particles from high concentration region to low concentration region so this movement of particles 
due to the concentration gradient is known as the diffusion and the current constituted in this process is called the diffusion current so the movement of particles means the movement of particles from higher concentration region to lower concentration region so the movement of particles due to the concentration gradient is known as the diffusion and the current constituted in this situation is called as the diffusion current let us consider that concentration p so here the holes concentration is p varies with the distance x so let us consider that the concentration of holes is p so those are varies with a distance is x in the semiconductor in a such a way that the hole concentration is greater for the lower values of x so if x value is low means the concentration of a holes is large so let us consider that the p is the hole's concentration that varies with a distance x in a semiconductor in such a case the hole concentration is greater for the lower values of x here p is the concentration of holes those are with a moving with a distance x for the lowest distance values p values are higher p values are higher so for the lowest values the concentration of holes are larger or greater then there is a concentration gradient that is minus dp by dx here minus dp by dx is known as the concentration gradient in the density of the holes resulting the hole flow along the positive x direction it represents the diffusion current so the concentration gradient is minus dp by dx the density of holes resulting that the whole flow along the positive x direction it represents the diffusion current so the diffusion whole current density is jp so generally the current density is j but here here we are representing the whole current density as jp jp means the whole current density that is proportional to the concentration gradient so jp is proportional to the concentration gradient jp equal to minus e into dp dp by dx where dp by dp by dx is the concentration gradient dp is the hole density e is the charge of electron so let us consider the concentration of holes varies with the distance x for smaller values of x the hole concentration is greater so then there is a concentration gradient is minus dp by dx so the density of holes resulting the hole is flow along the positive direction it represents the diffusion current so the diffusion hole current density jp is proportional to the concentration gradient and is given by jp equal to minus e dp into dp by dx that is equation 1 here dp is the hole current whole density dp by dx is the concentration gradient e is the charge of electron where e is the electron charge dp is called the diffusion constant dp is called the diffusion constant or diffusivity for holes so dp is called as the diffusion constant so in equation 1 the negative sign appears because dp by dx is negative and jp is positive along the x direction so here along x direction means the whole charge is along the x direction so the negative sign in equation 1 appears because dp by dx is negative and jp is positive along the x direction so a similar equation can be written for the diffusion of electron current density so diffusion of electron current density so diffusion of hole current density means jp here the diffusion of electron current density means jl so by replacing p with n and dp with dn so the equation one can be written as jn equal to minus e into dn dn by dx so similar equation can be written for the 
diffusion current density diffusion of electron current density jn by replacing the p and dp with the n and dn respectively and by replacing the minus sign by a plus sign then, then jn equal to minus e into dn into dn by dx so then the total current so in semiconductors when an electric uh, uh, when an external electric field is applied so for any semiconductor we are applying the external electric field then the both the drift and diffusion currents may be occur simultaneously if you take any semiconductor when we are applying the external electric field means both the drift and diffusion currents are occur simultaneously so the total hole and electron currents can then be written as the sum of the drift current and diffusion current here the total current means the sum of drift current and diffusion current so in semiconductors when we are applying the external electric field means both the drift current and diffusion current are sir occurred simultaneously then the total hole and electron currents can be written as the sum of the drift current and diffusion current so the total current density for holes and electrons can be written as jp equal to jp equal to e into mu p p into e minus e into dp dp by dx here e into mu p into p is the drift current for holes drift current for holes and minus e dp into dp by dx is known as the diffusion current for holes so the total current density for hole, holes can be written as jp equal to e into mu p p e minus e dp dp by dx here e mu p p e is known as the drift velocity for the holes drift velocity for the holes and e dp dp by dx is known as the diffusion current for holes diffusion current for holes similarly uh, the uh, current density for electrons so the current density for electrons is jn equal to e mu n n into e this is the drift current for electrons and e into dn into dn by x that is the diffusion current for electrons so the total current means the sum of the uh, drift current and uh, diffusion current so the total current density can be represented for holes and electrons the sum of the drift current and diffusion current so jp equal to e mu p p e this is the drift current for holes minus e dp dp by dx is the diffusion current for holes similarly the current density for electrons can be written as jn equal to e mu n n a minus e dn dn by ds here u mu n n a is the drift current for electrons and minus e dn dn by dx is the diffusion current for electrons so next topic is carrier generation and recombination and carrier lifetimes carrier generation and recombination and uh, carrier lifetimes so in an intrinsic semiconductor the number of free electrons and holes are equal already we know that in intrinsic semiconductors the number of electrons n equal to number of holes so in an intrinsic semiconductor the number of free electrons and holes are equal but new electron hole pairs are being produced continuously by thermal energy that means if you increase the temperature or if you are supplying the thermal energy to a semiconductor means it creates the new electron hole pairs so that say that at rate of g g is the electron hole hole pairs per unit volume so here g is the electron hole pairs per unit uh, per, per uh, unit volume per second that is g so in an intrinsic semiconductor the number of free electrons are equal to number of free holes so in intrinsic semiconductor number of free electrons are equal to number of holes n equal to p but new electron hole pairs are generated or produced continuously by 
supplying the thermal energy. So by increasing the temperature or by supplying the thermal energy, new electron hole pairs are generated. So that re rate of G is the electron hole pairs per unit volume per second. So here G is the rate of electron hole pairs per unit volume per unit second. So at the same time electron hole pairs get lost through the process of recombination. So here at the same time at the generation of electron hole pairs at the same time electron hole pairs are lost or destroyed through the process of the recombination. So the time period for which an electron or hole exist before the recombination process is called the mean lifetime which is usually in the range of 1 to 1000 microseconds so one, the lifetime is 1 to 1000 microseconds so in intrinsic semiconductor the number of electrons are equal to number of holes but we are supplying some th thermal energy or we increase the temperature new electron hole pairs are generated so the rate can be written as the g where g is the electron hole pairs per unit volume per second. At the same time, electron hole pairs are lost or electron hole pairs are destroyed through the process of recombination. So, the time period for which an electron or hole exists before the recombination process is called the mean lifetime. So, the time period for electron or hole existing before the destroyation or before the recombination process is called the mean lifetime which is usually in the range of 1 to 1000 microseconds. So, consider a specimen of n-type semiconductor. Then we are taking the n-type semiconductor. So, consider a specimen of n-type semiconductor having P0 and N0 are the uh, are the uh, number of holes and electrons at thermal equilibrium. So, consider a specimen of n-type semiconductor. Let P0 and N0 be the concentration of holes. P0 is the concentration of holes and N0 is the concentration of electrons at thermal equilibrium. So, P0 is the concentration of holes and N0 is the concentration of electrons at thermal equilibrium position. So, if it is illuminated with light, the covalent bonds will be broken and some of the bound electrons in covalent bonds are captured the photons. Now, we are illuminating the light, light nothing but photon. So, we are eliminate, illuminating the light with, uh, we are eliminating the light for the semiconductor, then the covalent bonds will be broken and some the bounded electrons in the covalent bonds capture the photons and some covalent bonds will be broken and additional electron hole pairs will be produced but we are considering a n-type semiconductor here p0 is the hole concentration and n0 is the electron concentration at thermal equilibrium position now we are illuminating the light for the semiconductor or the semiconductor is illuminated by the light now the covalent bonds will be broken and some of the bonded electron Electrons in covalent bonds are captured the photons. Now, and some covalent bonds will be broken means the additional electron hole pairs will be produced during the illumination process. Now, we are eliminating with the light means some covalent bonds are broken. Due to the covalent bonds broken, some electrons are captured the photons. So, due to the broken of the covalent bonds, the additional electron hole pairs will be produced. So, the concentration of holes and electrons therefore increase to new values. So, let us uh, primarily P0 is the hole concentration and N0 is the electron concentration. Now, here during the illumination process, new electron hole pairs are generated. So, the concentration of holes and electrons will be increased to P0 will be increased to P bar and uh, N0 will be increased to N bar. So, during the illumination process, the concentration of holes and electrons are increased due to the production of the new electron hole pairs. So, the production of new electron hole pairs increases the concentration of holes and electrons. Now, the new values are P0 will become P bar and N0 will become N bar. Then, the excess 
or hole injected the hole density is hole density increase of concentration of holes will be p bar minus p naught so here p bar is the new value of the holes now the excess or hole injected hole density can be written as p bar minus p p naught similarly the injected electron density will be n bar minus n naught where n bar is the increase of the electrons n naught is the concentration of electrons at the thermal equilibrium so similarly the injected electron density will be n bar minus n naught but electron hole pairs are produced by the illumination process the, therefore the increase in the hole concentration p will be equal to the increase in the electron concentration n so here the increase of charge carriers are equal so due to the electron hole pairs are produced by the illumination process so therefore the increase in the concentration of p so will be equal to the the increase of the concentration of electrons so the increase of holes will be equal to the increase of the electrons so during the illumination process due to the production of the electron hole pairs the increase in the hole concentration p will be equal to the increase of the electron concentration n so here that can be represented as p bar minus p not equal to n bar minus n n not here the increase of holes is equal to the increase of electron increase of hole means p bar minus p not and increase of electron means n bar minus n not so here the increase of holes will be equal to the increase of the electrons so p bar minus p not equal to n bar minus n not that is equation 1 now if the illumination is suddenly stopped so the illumination process is suddenly stopped after a steady state is reached now the illumination is stopped now we reach the steady state that means the thermal equilibrium in if tau p is the mean lifetime of holes so tau means that is the mean lifetime so here tau p means mean lifetime of the holes lifetime means the charge carrier exist before the recombination process is known as the mean lifetime that can be represented as tau so here tau p is the mean lifetime of the holes now if the illumination is suddenly stopped then we can reach the steady state or thermal equilibrium position now tp is the mean lifetime of the holes then decrease in the hole concentration per second due to the recombination so due to the recombination process it decreases the holes uh, while, while the generation process it increases the electrons and the hole pairs while in the recombination process it decreases the electrons are holes now decrease in hole concentration per second due to recombination process is uh, p by tau p where p is the concentration of holes tau p is the mean lifetime for holes now the increase in hole concentration per second due to thermal energy already we know that g is the uh, increase of the at the rate of the Uh, concentration of uh, holes per unit volume on per unit second so an increase in the hole concentration per second due to by supplying the thermal energy is g that is equation 3 then the time rate of increase of hole concentration now the time rate of increase of hole concentration per second equal to dp by dt equal to g minus p by tau p where g is the rate of hole concentration per second. second due to supplying the uh, thermal energy so then the time rate of increase of hole concentration per second can be written as dp by dt equal to g minus p by tau p where p g is the rate of concentration where p by tau p is the decrease of hole concentration during the recombination process but in steady state the dp by dt and uh, since the radiation is removed so in steady state dp by dt and since the radiation is removed the hole concentration should reach the thermal equilibrium value p not so here p not is the thermal uh, the hole concentration at thermal equilibrium p not thus g equal to p not by 
tau p a is equal to p naught by tau p that is equation 5 in steady state dp by dt and since the radiation is removed the whole concentration should reach the thermal equilibrium position p naught thus z equal to p naught by tau p that is equation 5 therefore equation 4 becomes dp by dt equal to dp by dt equal to P naught by tau P. Why? Because equation 4 is dP by dt equal to G minus P by tau P. Now equation 4 becomes dP by dt equal to where in the place of G we can replace P naught by tau P minus P by tau P. That is equation 6. So from this tau P is the LCM. So dP by dt equal to dP by dt equal to P naught minus P by tau P. That is equation 6. dP by dt equal to P naught minus P by tau P. That is equation 6. So since the excess or injected carrier density of a hose is a function of time and represents the increase in the minority concentration therefore p dash so the excess or injected carrier density so here p dash is the excess or injected carrier density as a function of time and it represents the minority charge carrier concentration now the p dash equal to p of t so p dash of t it is a function of t then that it can be written as p minus p naught so the excess or injected carrier density that is represented as p dash is a function of t and represents the increase in the minority charge concentration now p dash equal to p dash of t that equal to p minus p naught that is equation 7 Differentiating equation 7, we have dp dash by dt. So, equation 7, we can differentiate with the time dp dash by dt equal to, here we can differentiate p, we will get dp by dt. Here p naught is constant means we will get the 0. So, dp dash by dt equal to dp by dt. That is equation 8. Combining equation 6, 7 and 8, we will get dp dash by dt equal to p naught minus p by tau p that equal to minus p dash by tau p. So by combining the equation 6, 7 and 8, we got dp dash by dt value is p naught minus p by tau p that equal to, already we know that uh, what is the p naught minus p by tau p. So, so here already we know that P minus P naught is a P dash. So, P minus P naught is a P dash. Now, P naught minus P means it is minus P dash. That's why here we are writing as minus P dash by tau P. That is equation now. So, combining the equation 6, 7 and 8, we got that dp dash by dt equal to p naught minus p by tau p. Here p naught minus p is minus p dash. That's why here we are writing as minus p dash by tau p. That is equation 9. Which shows that rate of change of excess concentration is proportional to the excess concentration itself. Which shows that the rate of change of excess concentration is proportional to the excess concentration itself. Since here the illumination has caused an initial excess concentration. So here P dash is the excess concentration, initial excess concentration. So here the illumination has caused an excess concentration P dash of 0 equal to P minus P naught at time T less than or equal to 0 and then at T equal to 0 the illumination is suddenly stopped. So if T equal to 0 means that is a steady state here the illumination is suddenly stopped and the solution of equation 9 can be written as P dash of T equal to P dash naught exponential of 1 by tau into P that equal to P dash means P bar minus P naught into exponential of minus T by tau into P that is equation 10. So the, the solution of the equation 9 can be written as P dash of T equal to P dash of 0 exponential of 1 by tau into P. So that P dash of 0 means P bar minus P naught into exponential of minus T by tau into P that is equation 10. Thus, the excess carrier concentration decreases to zero exponentially with the time. So, 
the illumination has caused the an initial excess concentration p dash so p dash value is p minus p not at time t less than or equal to 0 and the time t equal to 0 the illumination is suddenly stopped that means the steady state occurred hence the solution of the equation can be written as p dash of t equal to p dash of 0 exponential of 1 by tau into p that equal to p bar minus p naught into exponential of minus t by tau into P. So, thus the excess carrier concentration decreases to zero exponentially with the time. So, these are the references. Today we discussed about the drift, cur uh, drift current, diffusion current, total current and generation and recombination process and carrier lifetimes. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.